he's Matt, I'm Matt, and we've got your geek news right here. And as promised, it is a review of Iron Man. And ah. I have to apologize <laughs> for it being a week later than planned, but it was so good we had to see it again. Yeah, we watched it. Yeah, it was, we weren't even kidding. It was, we saw it twice before, uh, before opening day, really. It was yeah. kind of insane. But you know what? The direction was so faithful to the mo to like a modern telling of this character that it was oh, it was captivating. I it was loved it. it was captivating and engaging, and I loved Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> well, yeah, and from a like a comic book geek point of view, the suits were so suit faithful. So it was like freaking cool, spot on. Yeah. I couldn't believe it, and it was indistinguishable CG from. Re in fact, yeah, that point, it was very that convincing. point when his mask like closes up I was convinced that was CG and true enough at one point the mask goes on his head in CG at another point it closes up practical and you could not tell the difference it was crazy so as mentioned earlier uh, Robert Downey Jr. he was a brilliant adaptation of Tony Stark he was played by an actor who Knows the role of addictive, over the top personality. Like, yes, absolutely. Spot Again, on. like every bit that I had hoped he would be able to bring his personal life to make an amazing character on the screen. And just con so he convincing, did. right? He the, did. It was the addiction, amazing. Just everything. Just. And, and what Tony cool. Stark had in personality was made up for by the fact that the villains had none. None. Yeah. Very two dimensional uh, terrorist villains. Yeah. They just. They were exactly, stereotypically, exactly what you thought a terrorist yeah, would be. Yeah, it's like, imagine what an American thinks a terrorist yes. is. It's like the lowest common denominator terrorist. Which, but, you know, makes it obvious that there would be a hidden villain. That yeah, there's someone above the terrorist leader. That's true. You know, Obadiah was kind of, from the moment he stepped out, an obvious villain. Um, but it was kind of cool to see it come about. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you really started to feel... Like there was a father-son relationship there, but you knew something was going wrong, which was cool. And I like the fact that the only real science fiction suspension of disbelief that was necessary was the arc reactor technology. And everything else made this a science fiction film. There yeah. were no mutant spiders. There were no, you know... Something gamma radiations. No, crazy. it was yeah, just it was very realistic. a guy in a suit. Like Matt could be Iron Man if he wanted to. Well... Thank you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, I've got to say, the Sabbath just made me cry. It was so good. I, I Actually, remember... when we were watching the movie, the part where he like blows up that tank and turns around, I was shocked that the song wasn't coming on like, yeah. in the trailers. I was like, hold on. The scene seems wrong. Is this where wrong. it's supposed to happen? Yeah. But oh, it just... When I first saw the trailer like a year ago that had the Sabbath in it, I was just like, ooh, a little cheesy. And it has grown on me like oh, you cannot believe. So well. I bought the video game oh, and I'm gosh. playing it constantly and you get to hear the Sabbath in it. Oh, thank God they paid for the rights to that. <laughs> well, you know what? This movie felt as exciting as that firm first moment where uh, Peter Parker oh, yeah. discovers that he can web sling. You know, right? it's like when when he walks out there blowing fire at people and launches himself in the air for the first time, you really have that Peter Parker moment. Yeah, it's insane. And thankfully, the ending of the movie was good, unlike Spider-Man. Oh. Oh. Kind of like a dream. Okay, the transformation of this character's ethics. It's just great to see that that brush with death you see everything between him seeing where his weapons are going all that stuff hits him and, and it's on a such personal a believable level transition. too i mean like he went from being this complete womanizer mm -hmm. to he kind of feels like oh i have no one except pepper for you pepper yeah <laughs> and the interesting thing there was that that romance between pepper and tony stark never gets to the kiss that in the trailer in the, yeah we mm -hmm. were watching it over over the trailer has a kiss that you never and see. And it in the never movie. happens, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm. And, you know, somehow that amazing ride in the Mark I suit when he comes out lighting people on fire, it's it's one upped by that maiden voyage of the Mark II. Just that that orgasmic expression on his face when he's riding in a suit, like Rocketeer style, oh, gosh, you know? Like yeah. so Very cool. cool. And just experimenting with it. I mean, like flying Walking up to as high as he do. can, you know. Yeah. Experimenting with the ice. And then when he solves with the ice problem, yeah, yeah the freezing problem. Oh. So cool. And did anyone notice that when he was painting the uh, Mark II into the Mark III, um, that moment where the color scheme was the Silver Centurion on the, ca on the uh, monitors, that was badass. 
down this side. Mark III and seeing Tony Stark's first mission with that red and gold armor was freaking awesome. It was a yeah. great way to show everything that he could do. I mean, it showed... It well, showed he could break the sound barrier, which yes. is awesome. It showed that he could... He uh, these amazing super missile... Shoulder-mounted bullets. Yeah, yeah, those were wicked. And it showed that he could get shot out of the sky by an anti-tank missile and get up with a couple scratches on his face. Yeah. So for me, that really set up the stakes so that when Ironmonger came out, and you saw that Iron Man was having a hard time, it just let you know what was having a hard time. It was great character development, just exposition, all in a seriously, like, oh, adrenaline-filled scene. It was just so good. And, of course, getting shot out of the sky by the fighter jets. Right, were which great. was pretty intense Driving as well. Driving with the top um, down. The use, yeah, exactly. The use of the secondary uh, arc reactor was actually a brilliant storytelling yeah. tool as well. You know, just having him start off with the initial one that he built in the cave, and then he gives it to Bar like Pepper, because he's just like, oh, And then Pepper really keeps it. Anymore. It was just such a good progression. And then progression. he a new one, and it's stolen from him from st by Stain, and just... Going back it just to the worked so again, well. Just worked well. It was it just, just such really an well. effortless, casual story. There were no, there were no points where you were just like, "Oh, that's unbelievable. That's stupid." And I just love the fact that it was such a comfortable, easy story. Yeah, but you could say it was predictable. I mean, like Pepper p keeps the first one. Obviously, it's going to come into use yeah, later yeah. on. And you know what? I've got to say, Favreau and Robert Downey Jr are just like the dream team for comic books. Yeah, for this me. was actually a fantastic comic book movie. I mean, I've watched all of them. Well, we both went and gone and yeah. seen all of them. And this was by far my favorite one. I to thought me, it was this the is, best made. This and is the benchmark yeah, for me. Yeah, exactly. Like, this takes Batman Begins and gives it the biggest bitch slap. I was amazed because, I mean, it just, it totally takes the mantle from Batman Begins for me. That was my favorite up until a couple of years ago. And now, and well, with Spider-Man, you know, we had all the excitement and visuals of Spider-Man without with the, Iron Man. Without, without the totally without cocked up ending, ending and with and Green Goblin being terribly transitioned yeah. to the screen. Like, this was front to back, bottom to top, everything perfectly transitioned. And then into with X-Men, you know, it was at the very least directed as well as X-Men. Yep. They were both very yep. well made, but... At least this one had one character that you really got to learn about and really cared about. And it was a breathtakingly incredible actor. Yes. You know, like James Marsden. He's just so mm -hmm. good. Robert Downey Jr. is just so... Oh, I, know, like, I know. I know. Incredible. Is, well, and we've already talked about this with the Oscar... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got an Oscar cast. That, that, like that. that does brilliant. it. brilliant. And I mean, compared to Superman, don't even get us started on Superman. Yeah. But Batman, you know, I, I personally, I'm not looking forward to Dark Knight like I was before. Well, I mean, it, like, I really, I personally like Christian Bale. Um, yeah. But I think he's, compared to Robert Downey he's, Jr., he falls just, flat, yeah. man. <laughs> he totally falls flat compared to Robert Downey Jr. How do you measure up to Robert Downey Jr.? Not even Edward Norton looks interesting compared to him. Well, I, actually, oh. I, I beg to differ on that. But, I right, love Edward right, Norton fine. as well. All right, all right, Anyway. But either way, <laughs> Iron Man is such an amazingly sympathetic character in this. And his last line in the film was amazing. I wasn't, I wasn't waiting for that when at all. When he just goes away from the cards, oh, I am Iron Man. <laughs> So oh, good. That was such a good way to end it. And of course, it. that was the last line of the movie only if you left before the credits. Right. Because there was a moment there where Marvel showed DC how it is done. Nick Fury comes in after the credits. Marvel's doing it right. Finally, they get to be the production house. They get to say that the Hulk and they get to say that that Spider-Man, they get to say that all these people live in the same world, but unfortunately, Marvel has to wait for all the rights to revert back to them, and they luckily own the rights to all the Avengers. And man alive, I'm looking forward to Incredible Hulk more than anything. Because we're going to see more Tony Stark. That's right. That's right. It's There's a, a crossover scene, and... And are we going to see oh, yeah. more Nick Fury, a.k.a. Samuel L. Jackson, who seems to make a cameo in every single freaking movie he ever made? He sneaks into every movie. He's in every movie. Not that I'm complaining this I mean, he's kind of awesome. He is. He's really awesome, but it's just really goddamn weird that he's in everything. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty Jeez. breathtaking. Now, unfortunately, seeing this movie twice and my obsessing over it and playing the Iron Man video game for Wii constantly meant we missed <sighs> we Speed, Speed Racer. Racer so, yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry. really sorry about that. But, but we're planning on doing a review of it, so... So there you go. And, uh, I mean, we've got all kinds of fun stuff coming up. We've got Indy this month, and there will be a preview come hell or high water. I will make Paramount give us a tape. We must see it. So don't worry, there's more good stuff coming, and uh, yeah, go see Speed Racer, because it bombed at the box office. Oh. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs>